Hope everyone's having a great day. Today we're on a LML Duramax. I believe this is a 2015, but not 100% sure. Um, I've already started taking it apart and then I realized this would be a great opportunity for uh, a video uh, because this is such a common issue on these trucks. So right now, I got the bag wet, of course. We're gonna be installing a uh, Exergy uh, fuel metering valve. This is a, uh, it's the valve that goes inside the injection pump on a CP4. And what this does is it has a really tight micron screen on the bottom that prevents the metal from actually going into the high side of the pump and contaminating the high side of the system. So um, with this valve installed, what it basically does, it keeps the metal in the pump and pushes it to the tank. So you're not changing the injectors, the rails, the lines, all that stuff. You're just basically putting a new pump in, the, obviously the fuel filter, dropping the tank, cleaning it out or replacing that sending unit and blowing everything out and you're good to go. Um, I've actually had a truck that we installed one of these in and the pump blew up. And uh, that's exactly what we had to do, put it all back together and she was great and I still see it drive by every day. But um, let's go ahead and get started on this. It's not too bad. It's a little tight, um, but there's just a lot going on in here, you know. Uh, it's kind of a tight area, so I'm going to do something a little different today that I've never done in hopes that it makes it easier. Um, but let's get started. So we have the engine cover. Obviously, like I said, everything's loose. Uh, I do the fawns. go, hey, and it comes off. So basically, there's two tens that sit up here. I already took those off. You take two tens, you slide it forward, take that off, just like that. Um, these are what the bolts look like right here. I already got those out. So we got that off and um, we're gonna unhook the AC pressure switch. You can see the weather pack and the, the connector lock stayed inside. So just keep that in mind. Unhook the alternator. Go over here, unhook the, uh, <clears throat> the solenoid inside the compressor. We unhook the clutch. So we're gonna take this harness and gently move it out of the way. Try not to cause any more wear on this harness. So I set that over there. Um, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to release the belt. I've already got the belt released because I'm going to take the AC compressor out. Um, I also did unhook this. They're 213 millimeters. The way that I get these out, they're kind of a pain. Um, but the way that I've learned to get them out, the easiest way is use a 13 swivel like this, a swivel socket. And you can get the bottom one loose, but you're going to have to do the bottom one by hand to get it all the way out. And these are what the bolts look like on those two. These are the, the 13s that hold this, the test port to the thermostat housing. So next up, we're going to go ahead and take this AC compressor off. And before you take this off, I would take the compressor off. It'd make it a lot easier to get this out. Uh, just because that bottom bolt, like I said, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But let's get this compressor off and uh, see how this is, actually. I'm kind of curious. The compressor, I believe, is 15s, and I don't know if I have a long enough extension. Just try not to strip anything. There's that. Let me get right on top of you. So there's though, we got the 415s out of there. I believe the 15s, yeah. So we got those out, I'm gonna set those in the tray. Um, the fun part is now I just took my mounting away from my camera. So now I'm gonna take the compressor, I'm gonna finagle it out. Try not to crack anything. Just gonna take the compressor, set it over there. Now this is the valve we're going after right now, it mounts inside the injection pump. Hopefully you can see it. So this actually makes it a lot easier. Um, the one thing that I can't stress enough, you need to make sure you're, you're doing this clean. It, everything got to be clean. If there's any dirt down here, um, you do not want to get in the injection pump. So we're going to go ahead and blow everything off. See all that dirt? getting in the intake so I'm blocking the port on the intake that's open. Okay. So we have everything pretty much cleaned up. Um, you want to kind of blow everything off that you're going to touch. See kind of like that. That should be okay. We're going to go ahead and unplug the injection or the injection pump. The volume control valve. This is not a regulator. This is a volume control valve. The regulator is actually right here. So I know it's it's kind of difficult to keep up with these terms, especially on these, these newer trucks, because 
now we have those used to be the regulators in the cp3 that's what it was but now it's a volume control valve just for extra you gotta spray this with brake clean like i said you want this thing to you want it cleaner than than you want to eat off this sucker don't want any crap down there just spray everything try to keep everything clean so now that that's clean of course i didn't bring a hand ratchet you know me the reason for that these are they should be t25s and you're gonna have to use a long socket like this um if you use a short one it usually won't fit around the side of the uh, volume control valve so there's only two and it's gonna be kind of hard for you to see so we're gonna shove this uh this is the return side we're gonna shove that to the side a little bit and there's dirt falling off so we're gonna blow it off Said the dirt is no joke. You do not want any dirt getting in the system. Because then you'll be causing more damage than any good. So we're gonna go shove it right between here. Okay, there's one. Now the next one we're gonna go right here. You have to push those lines aside. <clears throat> And this, <clears throat> unfortunately, is, like I said, it's quite difficult to do. It's not horrible, it's just very tight, you know? So now we have the two bolts out, and I'll show you. Now we're gonna be very careful, like surgeons. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up on this. I left the bolts set in there. And hopefully this thing has no metal in it, but it shouldn't. There's no codes or nothing. And if you do have fuel pressure codes, you need to address those first before you try to change this in, in hopes that it'll save it. Because once there's metal on the high side, there's nothing you can do. And you can see this one right here. There's zero metal. There's some stuff in there, but that's not a great sign. This truck does have, I think, 150,000 miles on it. So let me show you the difference between these volume control valves. So, as you can see right here, uh, on the left we have the extra G. On the right, we have the factory one. You can see the bolt holes. You see the, the way the screens are. The Exergy has a, a massive screen on it to protect it. So that's how it keeps that nice and... Uh, what, it, what it does is the uh, the fuel that feeds the high side go, has to go through that screen first. So it ends up plugging it up and then you lose fuel pressure, which is a great thing. So next, we have, I have the new one. I'm going to dab my clean glove down there. I'm gonna get a little bit of fuel just to lubricate this o-ring a little bit probably shouldn't be sticking my finger in the injection pump um but i'm gonna lube it with fuel you're gonna go down there you want to make sure this thing is as clean as can be um it looks perfect it's really hard to see let me see if i can get you in there to see i don't want to disturb too much because i don't want to get any contamination in there so you can see that's what it looks like right there see the open clear part so now it's really hard to get in there and get a good idea of what's going on. So now we're going to go ahead and this thing, like I said, it's all, I put some diesel fuel on it and then we're going to stick the bolts in there just to make it a little bit easier and uh, make sure you clock it the correct way. It should go like that. And we're going to set this thing in there. set kind of in place I'm going to uh, try to start these bolts because the bolts are kind of allow us to make it sure make sure it's straight in there so we're not damaging it because they'll fall in the pump fall in the, the hole and help line it up okay I know it's really hard to see I'm pretty much doing this by feel and very limited sight. <laughs> okay. 
go ahead and tighten it. Make it nice and slow. Okay. So one side started. You gotta be kind of careful with this stuff. And then this side we'll do by hand. Okay. Give a little jiggle wiggle, make sure she's in all the way, and then we can tighten it up. And I will uh, post the, the torque spec on the video so you can see. Um, I personally tighten them by hand. Never had a problem, but for some people I would recommend torquing them. So now we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so we got that done. The next step that we should do now is put this back in place. those two 13s tight right there um, we need to put this back in place okay and uh, I would recommend putting this back in place before you put that return with that the test port back in yeah we're gonna have to take this back off okay yeah so put make sure you put this on first there's that. I'll put this on now. And then and there's no special programming or nothing needed for that uh, extra G back. Hit the button on my. You're gonna put it in three. Give her all the beans. Okay, so I was plugged in. This is put in. The return line's put back on. Let me move this out of the way. We're gonna stuff the compressor back in. Gonna shoehorn it. Okay, so it's kind of a a mess. Uh, that goes around that, I believe. Yep, just like that. Okay, one, two. Just gonna start these. Trying to give my sockets away. Okay, now that we have that, let's run this. Uh, the compressor's tight. Let's run this harness back over. Looks like it's broken, of course. back on Ooh, stole my glove and so not really much there next up we're gonna put this back on then we gotta do the belt this you just want to be gentle go wiggle 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 yeah it's good That and now we're gonna put the belt back on. Okay, we're gonna make sure it's on on all the pulleys. And then now you can't see, couldn't see what I was doing, but you just want to make sure the belt's on all the way. You can see here we're on the power stern, on the AC, on the crank. On the tensioner, everything looks good. 
So that's how you do that. Um, you don't have to prime it or anything. Uh, I do need to still, this is unrelated, but I noticed this. I'm gonna fix this while I'm here. And we did change a fill filter uh, just because of maintenance. So I gotta prime that and then we'll fire it up. Okay, so queso okay, cheese. So this is part of this. This I know is the wrong bolt. It's gonna, and not the wrong, I shouldn't say that. It's not the exact bolt that goes in there, but the thread pitch is correct. <laughs> it's not like I'm putting the wrong thread pitch uh, bolt in there. See how it goes in like butter? So now that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and prime this filter off camera and then we'll go ahead and get this thing running. I apologize for the dinging, but we're gonna go ahead and fire it up. I still have to reset the uh, fuel filter light and top off the coolant, but let's see, fire right up. So yeah, that's how you do it. It's not too bad. I mean, removing the AC compressor makes it a lot easier. Um, honestly, that's I think the first time I've ever done it that way and I will continue to do it that way now. It just makes it a lot easier. But uh, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to uh, like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate it. Thanks, have a good day.